What's going on, everybody? Welcome into First Take on a Tuesday. Max Kellerman, how are we feeling? Miss Molly, very you well. You? I'm good, really good. Stephen A., what's going on? What's going on, y'all? Good morning. How y'all doing? Good, good, good. Uh, your team was on television last night. Let's talk about it. Yes, Monday they Night were. Football. The Steelers yes, rallied were. with 27 unanswered points, earning Mason Rudolph the distinction of being the first quarterback to ever get their first two wins as a starting quarterback on Monday Night Football. Juju Smith-Schuster balled out for his 12th 100-yard game. The 3-4 and four Steelers are still two games back behind the 5-2 and two Ravens in the AFC North. Stephen, I just want to give you a heads up. I can't hear you that well, um, but I'm going to direct this one to you. I got you, Stephen. A. Can I got Pittsburgh right. win the division? Oh, they can. I, I mean, it's a long shot, but I'm not giving up hope on my Pittsburgh Steelers. Not at all. Even with a third string quarterback, once again, the greatness of Mike Tomlin comes oozing through because when you have every reason to give up on this season, to believe that it's over, to be utterly disgusted with what you are witnessing, they come through. Now, in fairness, they scared the living hell out of me last night because I don't know what I would have done down 14 to nothing if they had ended up losing to the winless, hapless, hopeful, woeful uh, Miami Dolphins. But they came alive, they handled their business, and I'm fine with that. At the end of the day, having a third-string quarterback going out there defending the way that they do, um, obviously running the football relatively effectively, at least on some occasions, uh, no Antonio Brown, no Le'Veon Bell. To still be in this position, I got to give props where props is due. They are better than the Cleveland Browns, which I predicted, but I assume that would be with Big Ben Roethlisberger, not with Ma you know, not with a Mason Rudolph or anybody else. Uh, obviously, they're better than the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, who, who can't pull that off in this day and age? Uh, they still got to catch the Baltimore Ravens. It's going to be a long, daunting task. I don't know if it'll happen or not, but can they pull it off? Yes, Max. I'm still holding out hope. No, I would say uh, you should not hold out hope. Your Steelers are cooked, Stephen A. Um, first of all, Mason Rudolph's not good, at least not yet. He doesn't throw the ball down the field and, and played poorly in the first half of the game especially, and um, they have injuries at running back, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Look, the Steelers have a good defense, and when you look at their losses, some of their losses this season have been quality losses if there's such a thing. This isn't college, but still. Um, the Seahawks, the 49ers, uh, the Ravens, those were competitive games. You know, they got blown out by New England early, but they played competitively with some good teams. I think it's asking too much to ask if th them to make the playoffs, Stephen A, because I don't see them as a wild card, so you're asking them to win the division. And the difference is third-string quarterback versus Lamar Jackson. Look, I know it's more than that. I know you – there's a – as I mentioned, the Steelers have a good defense and, and they have a great coach. But that's really, to me, what it comes down to. I don't believe in who the Steelers have under center this year. Now, I do believe in the coach, Stephen, and I think, to me, a more interesting question is actually, can Mike Tomlin go 500 with this crew? Can he go mm. 500 without Roethlisberger? I thought that ship had sailed, but you turn around, you go, they're almost 500 now. And when you look at their schedule – like, like all NFL teams, they play some good teams, but this is not a particularly tough schedule the rest of the way. Colts, Rams, uh, Browns a couple times, Bengals, Jets, Bills, Cardinals. Right. They right. end with the Ravens. Like, that's not a right. killer schedule. So, if Mike Tomlin can go 500 with a third-string, second- and third-string quarterback, that's mm -hmm. an amazing accomplishment. Remember, he's never been below 500 throughout his career as a head coach, but he's always had Roethlisberger. Not this year. It would be amazing if he could do it. Well, you got to remember, Max, the key thing is the schedule that you just brought up. Okay, Baltimore beat them earlier when they faced one another. It was 26-23. I think that was an overtime victory, if I remember correctly, by the Ravens. Okay, could they get Baltimore in a rematch in the season finale? Quite possible, but tick, uh, you got to look at that. Then we have a situation right here. You got the Bengals, okay, and of course you got the Cleveland Browns twice. All winnable games. Let's keep that in mind. Then also you've got... Um, 
the New York Jets, the Arizona Cardinals, the Buffalo Bills. Now, obviously, you got to pretty much run the table. I mean, I can assume that you might lose to Indianapolis. I can assume you might lose to the Los Angeles Rams. But outside of that, you've got six to seven games that are incredibly winnable for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And if you do that, you talk about 9-7, and 10-6, and six, and hey, I'm going to hold out hope. What's wrong with that? Particularly I'll in the AFC North, where tell you the this. Baltimore Ravens look good in most instances, but then you remember when they went to bed against the Cleveland Browns earlier this season, you just never know. I'll tell you this. You talked about yesterday, Golden State, and the fact that defense, you can, act, you can put in effort in basketball. The thing that I'm looking at the Steelers right now, like you think coaching doesn't make a difference or you think like if you're not an X's and O's guys, cause, guy, because Tomlin's not considered an X's and O's guy. But the way you coach up a team and get them to play together in a unit doesn't make a difference. Look at the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. They do have a chance, I think, to go 500. I do not see them making the playoffs. But if you see the losses, the close losses to those quality teams that I mentioned – and you see the struggle of the Browns, largely put on the coach by many, including you, by the way. Um, you see the difference a guy like Tomlin makes. This would be, in certain respects, his greatest achievement. Were he to make – I'm saying go 500. You're saying make the playoffs. In a way, it would be his greatest achievement as a coach because the knock on Tomlin has, be, has been he inherited someone else's team and has always had a, a, a future Hall of Fame quarterback. Not anymore, he doesn't. He does not have that anymore. If he were to pull something like that off, it would be maybe his crowning achievement and put to bed a kind of persistent criticism about him as a coach. I just don't see him doing it, Stephen A. Well, I don't listen. think the Steelers have enough firepower, especially now with injury at running back. Yeah, yeah, you're entitled to feel that way because you're coming from a very pragmatic perspective. And if I was doing so, I would totally agree with you. But I'm being emotional here, Max Kellerman. Work with me a little bit, okay? I got to hold out some kind of hope. If you got the Jets on your schedule, to, uh, get the Bengals on your schedule, two games against the Browns on your schedule, the Ravens on your schedule, and the Rams still trying to figure stuff out, I mean, you can hold out hope. Look at the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. James Conner had his first real game as far as I'm concerned. It was against the hapless uh, Miami Dolphins. Had a rush for 100 yards all season long, first six games. We get all of that. We know what the Steelers are working with and what they're working against. We understand all of that. All I'm saying is the real point of contention within the AFC North is the Baltimore Ravens. And I believe that if they find themselves struggling, hiccuping along the way at any particular juncture, I like the Steelers' chances. Do I believe it's going to happen? Hell no. It's just too much stacked against them. But I'm holding out hope because, damn it, I'm emotional. It's my Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not apologizing for it to anybody. Antonio Brown messed it up. Le'Veon Bell messed it up. Big Ben Roethlisberger getting injured messed it up. I mean, the dysfunctionality from last year that caused all of this. The transpires messed it up. But I'm still holding out hope. I got to hold on to it, man. Real quick, Stephen A. Real quick. Juju Smith-Schuster. I was saying yeah. last year he is a number one receiver. You said, careful, mm -hmm. with that Antonio Brown there, we don't know if that's the case. He was not very good for some of this year and, and made you look pretty smart, but I look smart this morning. Where are you on Juju Smith-Schuster as your number one receiver? Right now, he's got about 30 receptions for 443 yards. I still don't think he's proven he's a worthy number one. He's incredibly talented, but I think ideally – uh, he's an elite number two. I think being the number mm. one has exposed him to some degree, but in fairness to him, with Big Ben Roethlisberger going down, how can we truly, truly right. tell? So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's almost like you got to give him a mulligan for this particular season. And he had a big night last night. Because without Big Ben, it's hard. It, 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 it's, it's unfair to judge him uh, uh, too stiffly mm -hmm. uh, without Big Ben Roethlisberger. That, that would be, that would be my, my thing about him. But I still view him as an elite number two as opposed to a bona fide number one the, at this yeah. particular juncture. The jury's still out, I guess, especially one. your big night comes against the Dolphins, so what? But the jury's still out, but the, the signs are pointing in the right direction for Juju Smith. Of course, and for the team. This is the first time the Steelers have won back-to-back -back games without Ben Roethlisberger since Michael Vick was there, a record 18 straight Monday night football wins. Uh, they will face the Colts on Sunday, but tomorrow uh, Stephen A. will be on SportsCenter presented by Mountain Dew. How Giannis's pregame routine helped make him an MVP. Plus, he'll sit down with Kemba Walker and Paul Pierce will join him live on the court. All leading up to Bucks Celtics on ESPN. That's SportsCenter Wednesday. 
at 7 p.m. Stephen A., what else you got? Yeah, yeah, you don't want to miss what's coming up on First Take. The one and only Adam Schefter joins us to tell us which NFL stars will be on the move before today's NFL trading deadline. Plus, I'll tell you why OBJ has not been a disappointment for the struggling Cleveland Browns. And